the main novelty of this work was that we, I guess, discovered something that we didn't think was possible before, and that's that um, water flowing or stored beneath the ice sheet, so underneath the ice, between the ice and the bedrock, could actually fracture the ice sheet and make its way out and erupt out of the surface of the ice sheet. And we kind of know that water flows from the surface to the bed of the ice sheet and then underneath it. But what we've never seen before in Greenland is it actually kind of flowing in a reverse direction. So going from the bed up and out at the surface. I think the one that, that I found most useful was thinking about the size of this fracture zone or this crevasse zone. So we had an area that was previously like smooth, unblemished ice. And then after the event, we saw kind of fractures and ice blocks where the flood had essentially cracked the ice sheet and escaped out. Um, we estimate that that, fl that size of that fracture zone was equivalent to around 50 54 football pitches in size, so around 380,000 square meters. It really emphasizes the importance of understanding uh, what we call subglacial hydrology. So the flow of water beneath the ice sheet that that we know we know that that's an important control on how how the ice sheet will respond in the future. So as as the climate warms and we generate, uh, you know, and the ice sheet melts faster and we have more meltwater, what impact does that 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 meltwater flowing underneath the ice sheet have on the ice sheet in terms of it contributing to sea level rise. Jelajahi cara baru mendapatkan informasi. Download Metro TV Extend sekarang.